it took an old brand into a new direction. When you develop under Tom Clancy franchise, it means that you need to validate and to justify everything. It introduced the world to a new kind of hero. Who doesn't want to sneak around in the shadows and uh, still feel like you're a badass? I mean, you don't need to fire a rocket launcher to be able to do that. Sam Fisher is this over-the-hill, cynical, jaded, middle-aged rogue. You didn't answer my question. And made one of the most revolutionary advances ever seen in a multiplayer game. The multiplayer game is really what made Pandora tomorrow. It was just a whole new, different kind of multiplayer experience. They can work together so that one of them could push another one on the enemies to knock them out. This is the history of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. SEALs, Green Berets, Delta Force. These elite military units are the stuff of legend and have inspired countless video games. Some give gamers a taste of the action, but others focus on a different aspect of Special Forces work. Well, the stealth action game, it's a different kind of game from what we're used to in the fact that killing is not the priority in a stealth action game. You know, it's about not being detected. It's about not creating havoc out of a situation. It's really almost like walking into a place and leaving it as it was, as if you were never there. And I think that really creates a unique type of gameplay. Early pioneers in the stealth action genre set a high standard. When you talk about stealth, it's very hard to leave out the original Metal Gear. There was the hiding behind the walls and not being detected. But I think the latter generation games on the PlayStation, Metal Gear Solid, really picked up on the idea of you know, hiding behind things, and especially with a 3D landscape, that created a whole new style of gameplay that really has taken off in this industry. While gamers learn the ins and outs of this exciting new genre, best-selling author Tom Clancy lends his name to a line of realistic video games. People were really enthusiastic, certainly around the industry, when Clancy announced a title. Well, only because his properties are so strong. He's probably the most popular fiction writer, certainly among men, easily, that there is. And the, the thought of those properties and those characters, Jack Ryan, etc., being translated to computer, was very exciting. It's only a matter of time before Ubisoft decides to blend stealth action with the Clancy brand. The title of this new game is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. We wanted to make a stealth game where we can have a closer connection with the environment. So the base of the concept was to being able to play with lights and shadow, to modify your own environment so you can have a better shadow path to go through the areas and achieve your goals. We chose to work with the Unreal Engine because it offered the power and the flexibility we need. Everything in the game world cast a shadow. This means that the player could interact with light and shadow like never before. They can use shadow to hide in. They could also detect enemies by seeing only the shadow. We add some visual touches like the soft physics system, which use what we call soft body. Soft body are anything in the environment that isn't solid, like curtains and flags. One of the things that made people excited about the Splinter Cell series was that it really highlighted the details of a stealth element. Then it tells you how hidden you are in the shadow and whether you're partly in the light or in the shadow, and definitely the thermal goggles and the night vision. The idea was to make uh, a fully interactive environment, make it possible to shoot a computer, take a soda can, and show it to distract enemies but much more importantly, to shoot out lights. Shooting lights allow for a different gameplay experience depending on uh, basically how you play. Ubisoft knows they'll need more than some pretty lighting to win over gamers, so they set out to create a lead character that will hold his own against the competition. Hi there. <laughs> Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is set to take stealth gaming to the next level. 
And at the center of it all is a government faction called the Third Echelon and their key operative, Sam Fisher. Hello, Colonel. He's a rough and tumble guy, but he's got the, a sense of patriotism. And that's what makes him a real strong character. He's fighting for the country, and he's part of the secret third echelon organization, subdivision of the NSA. Are we working with the CIA's cooperation? Through me, you're attached to a dozen of the best NSA minds we have. You didn't answer my question. Who doesn't want to sneak around in the shadows and still feel like you're a badass? I mean, you don't need to fire a uh, rocket launcher to be able to do that. Of course, if you can, that's that's great. But uh, the, just the the range of abilities and the uh, range of movement and the, the skill sets that have been set up for that character have really helped make him an icon of the current sort of stealth gaming vogue. I really have a lot of respect for what they've done with Sam Fisher as a character. Your average character is, is a bulging biceps, quip-throwing, Arnold Schwarzenegger retread, and they're just not interesting. Whereas Sam Fisher is this over-the-hill, cynical, jaded, middle-aged rogue. What's the door code? Two, eight, four, six, nine. It was a pleasure working with you. That's something great. That's not a character we've seen before. Michael Ironside really right. sells him. Your guess is as good as mine, but I wouldn't recommend guessing. I just thought that was a great pair of boots to be walking around in. Like any real-world Special Forces soldier, Sam has both the tools and the talent to get the job done. When you develop under Tom Clancy franchise, it means that you need to validate and to justify everything. It takes place in a very near future, so you need to use a political environment that is believable, that is linked to the actual situation. You need to use gadgets that are already existing, that are already used by special forces. Sam suit was based on a prototype that's being tested right now by the Navy SEALs, which is a wetsuit that you can wear in and out of water and is a suit that adapts itself to uh, temperature changes. We thought it would just fit the character, basically, s since our game is based on a near future type of setting. The great thing about this Learn Cell series is the gadgets. He has got the scope that he can shove under the door and see what's going on on the other side. He's got the chaff grenades, he's got uh, thermal vision, and he's got night vision. And But the gadgets aren't so far out. They're not so sci-fi, you know. These things are stuff that probably stealth operatives in the real world actually use, which makes it even more exciting to the player. Sam's goggle became an important part of his appearance because we want wanted to come up with a design that would make the character recognizable to the player. So the silhouette with the three dots makes Sam recognizable to a lot of people. Sam's first mission is not stopping terrorists, and it's got nothing to do with saving the world. His first job is to take on one of the biggest legends in the world of gaming. In November 2002, Ubisoft releases Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell for the Xbox, and Sam Fisher goes head-to-head -head against Konami's Solid Snake. And this newcomer holds his own. The Splinter Cell game was an overwhelming success. In many ways, it almost put the Xbox on the map as well. People bought the Xbox just to play Splinter Cell, and when you do that, that is a successful game. A game that sells a console is the best game that you can make. More than one million copies of Splinter Cell are sold in half a year, turning it into a platinum hit. No one is surprised to hear that a sequel is on the way. But what gamers don't expect is for an entirely different team to be developing the game. Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow was done by Ubisoft Shanghai team. Montreal team took a break for a little bit. It just shows the trust that Ubisoft has with their different development teams. The Shanghai studio was extremely successful in creating a sequel. In March 2004, Ubisoft releases Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow for the Xbox. I thought the storyline was a lot deeper in Pandora Tomorrow, and it really fleshed out Sam Fisher even more for the fans. We knew who he was from the first game, but Pandora Tomorrow actually made him a little more human, and we understood more about Sam Fisher than we did in the first game. In this sequel, Sam Fisher is tasked with stopping a terrorist group from releasing a deadly disease into the world. While the game includes the usual mix of new gadgets, levels, and moves, it's the new multiplayer mode that really makes an impact. Pandora Tomorrow really is the first game that gives you two totally diametrically opposed ways to play. Pandora Tomorrow has created an incredibly compelling uh, multiplayer format between the spies and the mercenaries. We 
You've got one side that's sneaking around and the other side that's running around trying to blow those guys up through maximum violence. You've really got two entirely different games going on, but they merge seamlessly and it's just an absolute dynamite multiplayer mode. Using the Xbox Live Communicator has been an incredibly compelling part of a very original multiplayer experience. Pandora Tomorrow is every bit as successful as the first Splinter Cell title, selling 1.7 million copies in a year. But the original developers of Splinter Cell haven't just been sitting around counting their money. They've been hard at work on a third game, and when it's revealed to the world, everyone is amazed. Both Splinter Cell and Pandora Tomorrow push the stealth action genre in new directions, but the third game in the series, Chaos Theory, is a giant leap into the next generation. With Chaos Theory, they're definitely taking Splinter Cell to a new level. What they're trying to do with Chaos Theory is really create a true sequel in the single player version. When's the last time I saw you? I'm afraid I have no recollection of that, Senator. That's right! We wanted to enlarge the boundaries of the game uh, to remove all the trier and error type of gameplay. We wanted to make the game more accessible for a larger audience. Once again, Ubisoft Montreal crafts a frighteningly believable scenario to set the game in. Sam Fisher's mission is to save the world from these kinds of attacks. I mean, it's, uh, it's no surprise there. In Asia, there's an economic crisis in Japan. There's a tension going on between China and North Korea. Events in the Yellow Sea took a turn for the worse today when North Korean and Chinese forces blockaded and boarded a Japanese cargo ship. So when all of these players get involved in this, it gets very political and very ugly. And it's really about how Sam and Echelon and all of these major players interact with each other. So Sam is sent in this area to check what's going on, to look for different information. Why did you torture Morgan Holt? I don't know! But Sam is always looking for what we think is the bad guy, and turns out that at some point we're like, wow, it might be him. You're not much good to me anymore. Chaos Theory includes massive improvements in both graphics and sound. So we've spent nearly eight months to rebuild all our graphic engine from scratch. People considered the graphics and the original Splinter Cell as very good. So we had a very tough challenge ahead to innovate, get like one full step ahead of everybody else. We added an entire, what we call a sound masking system. The noise that's in an environment are very loud. Any sound that you make won't be heard. Noisy down here. Makes it easy to sneak up on people. With the new technology, details on our, all our characters is much improved. It allows us to make much more organic type of texture. Applying that on Sam obviously changes a little bit his look, his face. He might feel a little bit younger now, which is okay. We still kept those gray lines, gray hairs on the sides too, so which is uh, also a signature for, for our main character. We built this huge dynamic weather system. We built a dynamic wind system. There's ambient wind in the world. That wind scales dynamically. We built the dynamic rain system. And if you step in the water and step back out, you'll see that you're wet, and it changes in real time the mapping on the character. And over time, you'll dry off. The environment, uh, that's one of the reasons why our budget in terms of resources for the hardware is so high in terms of graphics. Graphics are, are playing a key role in this game, like the light and shadows how everything interacts together. It's part of the gameplay. When you take the weather system and our dynamic sound and our dynamic normal mapping and specular highlighting and our dynamic wind, it's really just all of those systems acting together. And we say there's a storm front coming in. Rain starts to fall harder. Things start to get wet. They start to become more reflective. The enemy at the same time starts to get wet and they don't like to be wet, so they change their patrols to go places that are dry. Sam gets a lot more interesting details on him. The sound of thunder comes in and you'll see a flash of light which might give away your position from the lightning but then the thunder can cover up the sound you make so it's all these dynamic systems hacking together new improvements in the game's ai will make sam's opponents smarter and deadlier than ever you are going down we really wanted to improve the uh, the ai of the cards you're pathetic so we try to give them more human reaction, try to give them some sensation that they, they want to stay alive. We want them to be scared, to be stressed. So if you play around with a guard and you just make some noise there, 
break a light there. But he never sees you. He's gonna, first going to react like, oh, that's strange. What the? What is that? Who's playing with me? And his whole attitude is going to change. He's going to be more stressed, looking around. Like, ah! What we did focus on was uh, creating like very good compatibility for the AI. Ah! What we did is actually make it completely automatic. So the NPC will be aware of where the player is looking at. When they work in group, they can actually call for cover fire. So we wanted to make sure that they would care for their life, they would go for cover, and it would be very tough to kill. Instead of just you know a, a handful of canned, uh, what we call barks, uh, lines that the AI says, did I hear something? Did something just go past down there? Yeah! And now we have a much broader range of things that they can notice. They can talk to each other about things that they see in the world. If one guy hears a noise, he'll say, did you hear that? And the other guy will say, hey, you! And then they form like an impromptu team. Get ah! Get so like really much more sophisticated layering of their behaviors and the things that they can do to respond to things that they perceive. The bad guys aren't the only ones with new tricks up their sleeves. Sam's better equipped than ever. And this time, the kid gloves are off. As Splinter Cell Chaos Theory takes shape, it becomes clear that this isn't just another sequel. The development team is set to surpass the previous games in every way. Sam Fisher will face even greater challenges than before. We really want to improve on Sam's behavior. We wanted to have some new move. And also want to make Sam more in contact with the whole environment. Only the best agent can use a knife. Sniping is not cool anymore, see? <laughs> so Sam's attitude and the rewards of the player by going closer because you can perform close action, close stealth. So this is an area that was very important for us. New moves, obviously, for Sam, new gadgets. We wanted to give him some more spectacular moves. The main one is the pro move, which is going on the horizontal pipe, just waiting for an NPC to get just under him and grab him and choke him. One of the few uh, moves that we added was to be able to get close to characters, either grab them or knock them out or uh, kill them. Even the environment can become a useful tool. There's the physics system. One of the issue we had in the original Splinter Cell was that we didn't have ragdolls. So when we were killing an enemy or just knocking him out, he was actually passing through objects, like a chair, the walls and we got rid of that. So now the, uh, the NPC, when they die, they just collide with their environment. Sam Fisher can interact with the body. You can actually pick a body, carry it on your shoulder. You can drop it somewhere. You can use it as a weapon. So it's very strategic. You can bash door to knock out an enemy that stands just behind a door. These new additions give players more freedom to play Chaos Theory any way they want. If you decide to, to shoot at everyone, or to kill everyone, the game supports it. However, it's going to be harder, and you might miss some opportunity or secondary objectives that uh, you would have otherwise. Those who want to replay the game or try it as a shooter, why not? It's your game, you decide how you want to play. I mean, we're not the one who's going to tell you how to play, so we decided to design a game that supports any kinds of situation. The award-winning multiplayer modes from Pandora Tomorrow are also improved upon and expanded. In uh, Chaos Terry, we're introducing another new game mode, which is the co-op. Co-op is a mission-based campaign where two rookie agents are going on a field on a side story of what Sam Fisher does. There was a lot of challenge in the co-op mode, having two playable characters acting at the same time and making very specific action together to lock together to do some specific move and sometimes interact with a card or something. Co-op is very important because think of everything you can do for single player. Imagine that you now have a partner that can help each other to reach certain area they couldn't otherwise. They can work together so that one of them could push another one on the enemies to knock them out so you cannot do it by yourself anymore. You gotta trust the partner. Get over here and let's get moving. The replay value behind it with all those elements is nearly unlimited. Today, the Splinter Cell series has sold 9.7 million copies worldwide. The series has even spawned a New York Times best-selling novel. 
the 2005 release of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is just another step for this revolutionary series. Splinter Cell is the type of series that's probably going to have a lot of longevity, mainly because it's a game that's steeped in reality. This is happening somewhere in the world right now. For that fact alone, I think they can always update the Splinter Cell series. It's a great franchise to really keep it rolling with the times. I just needed a little help. I'm tired of, tired of pounding buttons. There's a lot of pressure from other gamers. Who's to say what's right and what's wrong? They made the codes. It's just so easy. Put in the code. Put in the code. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry.